right-wing Hindu groups bar Muslims from praying in India. So before I get into this news, I want to say that there, this is a little bit contentious, complicated story, and I'm going to do my best to represent the positions of both sides. And I think Armin and I will have some interesting commentary on this as well. Um, on November 5th, a gathering of right-wing Hindu groups prevented entry to a public ground in the city of Gurugram, also known as uh, Gujaran. I'm so sorry with the uh, pronunciation. Um, at a site typically frequented by Muslims for offering Friday prayers. Large tents were erected directly over the public grounds, often used for Muslims' Friday prayers, and were used to instead celebrate the festival known as uh, Govandhan Puja. The event was held days after the state government of Haryana reversed the permission for Friday congregational prayers across eight out of 37 different public grounds. The cancellation of permits for prayer congregations is in part the result of a campaign to get rid of Muslim prayer areas by the group known as the Joint Hindu Struggle Committee. That's the English translation of the group's name. The group even issued an ultimatum to the government saying that they would take action if Muslim prayers in public were not stopped. The local state president of the Joint Hindu Struggle Committee said that his group wouldn't issue another warning, adding, quote, it will then be the responsibility of the administration to maintain peace, not ours. The event on November 5th was notably attended by uh, Kapil Mishra, a priest and member of the ruling BJP party who was notorious for previously inciting deadly violence against Muslims in Delhi. So, ah, we have someone in the chat who's about to get into it. So guys, we have heard of Love Jihad. Now we're going to talk about Land Jihad. Okay, this is a Jeez. new conspiracy, and this time it's called Land Jihad. So, really, that's, that's I thought that was a joke. Is this actually a thing? People are no, that's actually what they call it. Okay, wow. Okay, so All let right. me before we get into it, let me unpack this story. Thank so, you. in uh, Guru Gram, which is outside of Delhi, um, traditionally since 2018, there have been 37 places around the city where Muslims are allowed to pray in public on Fridays. And, you know, Friday, Juma Namaz prayers, like, um, it takes like 15, 20 minutes. This is a city and in what, which state? Yeah. Haryana. Haryana. Okay. Um, and this has become the, these Muslims performing their Friday prayers in public on the street and public areas has become a major source of contention. So, and there's also, there was kind of an agreement settled in 50 Shades of Jihad, I can't. I can't. <laughs> wait, wait, you can't distract me like that. Just, just ignore okay. it, I'm gonna highlight, yeah, just I can't. continue. So, oh, liberal, liberal Bong Hindu, love the name, is um, also providing context, saying before 2018, there was no problem with the Namaz prayers. Suddenly, these Sanghi groups, meaning these like, you know, very virulent Hindu groups, come out to protest against Namaz. So, like I said, my understanding is that prior to 2018, Muslims would perform their Friday prayers in public wasn't really a big deal. Then in 2018, there started to be a lot of contention around it and the potential for violence surrounding it. So the city came up with this um, little ordinance uh, or a permit, something of or something or other, saying that, okay, in these 37 public areas, this is okay. Now, fast forward to the current day, over the past at least a month, there has been continuing and escalating issues. Actually, it almost goes back a year. Um, escalating issues and threats of violence surrounding Muslims performing prayers in public. Now, um, a steel man of the right-wing Hindu group position is them saying, this is, the, they're blocking public streets. People need to get around the city. I need to get to the hospital. You're blocking the street. This is unacceptable. Okay, that's, that's the best position out of the right-wing Hindu groups that I've heard. And they progressively get worse uh, all the way to bigoted 
from that. But I will start with their best position. Okay, that they're blocking the streets. We don't. Let like me them. guess. Let me guess. So, okay, so the milder, uh, so that's a milder complaint against all these Muslims praying in the streets. So like, dude, we are in the way. And the most extreme ones are. This is a way to dominate. It. This is an Islamic takeover of India. Is that the most extreme Basically, version? they're saying yes. that they are dominating the public space and this is land jihad, okay? Or they are saying that these prayers are being infiltrated by outsiders and mentioned like Bangladeshis being in that mix. Oh, okay. Like, well, actually, got more mm, got more insane than I thought. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and then it gets even worse from there. So... This has, I mean, to be honest, though, the milder version of this critique, I am completely for it. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and the solution to that is build more mosques, not like, like, oh, hot build... take from Armadon. Well, no, no. actually, yeah, on. that yeah. brings me to the other side, which is the Muslims are saying, we've been doing this for a long time. It wasn't a problem until there started to be threats of violence against us. This is only something that takes. 15 to 20 minutes once a week and then we pack up when we go home and then two or they also say we don't actually block the streets like i i don't actually know if that's true but there are many muslim groups who saying we don't actually block the streets and then they're also saying the only reason why we do this in public to begin with is the fact that we don't have enough mosques in the area or the mosques that we do have are too small for us to all perform our friday prayers and we're not allowed to construct See, I was new right. mosques. I was right. I was right. Would like they... we're prevented so... from building new mosques, so we have to perform our prayers in public. Yeah. So this is your fault. You're like you're so scared of us <laughs> building mosques. That's why we have to do it in the goddamn streets. Like with the with the with the far right Hindus who are complaining about Muslims um, praying in the streets. Are they for building more mosques? So that they don't have to pray in the streets? Are they like, would they be like, okay, like, can they agree with the Muslims then on this that we need more mosques? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make a presumption and say no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I kind of get like what I mean in this situation, I kind of get what the Muslims are saying. Like, well, what do you want? Do you want us to stop paying in the streets? Pray like, well, give us more mosques. You don't want to give us more mosques. Well, then we have to pray in the streets. <laughs> like, you can't have it both ways, like, right? So I kind of, like, I kind of understand the Muslim position on this one. I mean, I am yeah. not in favor of... By the way, I'm completely in favor of mosque being built um, with private money. You know what I mean? What I'm, like, I when I, I complain about mosques being built when taxpayer money is being used or churches oh, totally. or temples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not against money. like Muslims getting together and just making, yeah. I mean, foreign money is fine as long as it's not tied to the politics of a foreign, you know. Like usually the problem with usually the problem with foreign money is that it's not just foreign money. It's like Islamic Republic of Iran or like mm -hmm. the Saudi family or like yeah, the yeah, Turkish yeah. government or something. That's the problem with foreign money. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So that's kind of the greater background of this event. Okay. Like, so then, wait. Somebody's saying, you, no, you pray at home and not in the streets. Well, I mean, you or or you pray. You could pray at home, but you could also like mo religions. Religious people have the right to pray in their mosque. Like you could like it's part of their practice. I mean, we're against we're against religious beliefs, but it is their right to congregate and have mass prayers, like just like Christians and. Hindus and Muslims do, and and everybody else and Jewish people do. Like we don't think like they don't have a right to. I mean, I don't understand. Like that's part of their. You know, do you deny Hindus and Christians and Jewish people to also get together and pray? Like I don't. Um, Wait. Yeah, I don't understand. We're well, going. So now that I've provided like the greater background, I kind of want to dial into like what happened recently. So there have been culminating complaints from the community about these prayers happening in public. In fact, police have to protect, there's been instances of the police having to protect Muslim men um, while they perform their prayers, while people are standing like just meters away, like shouting hate, hateful chants at them. Um, and so finally, um, the 
the state government said, okay, out of these 37 different areas, we revoke your ability to do this in public at eight spots. Okay. And one of these spots, which is known as sector 12, there are two, there are two or three sectors that are highly contentious. One is sector 12 and another one is sector, I think it's 37. So for sector 12, that's where it was revoked. And then immediate, and then shortly afterwards, that's when this right-wing Hindu group comes and they hold their festival on the exact same site where Muslims typically perform their Friday Juma prayers. And this is what Such this event for this festival was attended by VHP members, BJP members, um, very uh, some local significant right wing supporters um, as a what was understood to legitim as legitimizing these actions of taking away Muslims ability to pray in public. And they were one argument that I already said they were they were saying, oh, well, this is because we don't want them to block the streets. But ironically, <laughs> they were doing this by constructing massive tents in this little um they wow. like made this dude out of like mud they like built this little figure out of mud for part of their ritual. i don't like right over that, it's not mud it's cow dung okay i wasn't sure so i was just gonna oh. say it was mud i don't know i didn't know what it was okay. built out of but they made a little dude they made, it actually looked yeah. kind of cool on the dirt and it, it looks was cool but it festival. smells really bad they decorate it looks really pretty as long as you're not there to witness it because it's cow dung they make they, as part like guys i don't know if you know like hindus as part of their festivals they make little figurines out of cow poop they make cow poop figures but yeah go on it it did look like poop but i wasn't going sure. to assume because i'm woke <laughs> <laughs> um, um so people are pointing out they're like isn't it hypocritical that you guys are complaining about them yeah. blocking the roads with your religious rituals when you literally are doing this exact same thing which many people are interpreting as a show of force in the public space in the in the public space like they just wanted to um point out that hypocrisy and this i did see some reporting that i still need to completely understand there might be the potential for more complaints to lead to even more of these public areas being removed from um their ability to um go pray there in public i'm not completely sure um so there, there's a potential for more to be revoked um and what it's Actually, I want to show a little clip of this um, before, before you festival do, can I that respond? happened. I want to respond to somebody. Please. Yeah. Hold on. I think I think this is like one of the Hindu guys. Um, so he or she is saying, no mosques, no Islam. Why would anyone allow Islam, an ideology that advocates for cir what? circumstances where people can be put to death for inherently nonviolent acts? Okay, you criminalize the violent acts. You cannot, like, by what authority do you get to stop people from building their own mosques and praying in it as long as they're not violating anyone else's rights? We, yes, we believe that Islam is ridiculous and, uh, like, it's, the religion is complete superstition and nonsensical, but no government, no authority should have the right to stop them from being being able to build their own mosques and pray at it as long as they're not violating anyone else's right. We can speak against their beliefs, but you shouldn't give, I mean, do you, the person who's saying this, do you also, if you give a government the authority to do that to Muslims and not let them build their mosques, then that government will have the authority to not let Hindus, like would that standard apply to Hindus, Christians, and every other religion as well? Like this is ridiculous. This is like, Look, it's such a government overreach that here that you're endorsing is absolutely ridiculous. This is tyranny. This is fascism. You're endorsing yeah, fascism. That's straight up fascism. <laughs> that's straight up fascism. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. What do you want to? So I just <laughs> to me, 
<laughs> it really helped me understand <laughs> Dia D saying like, cows be like WTF. <laughs> like, why do you why are you doing that with my poof? This is weird. You guys are weird. Stop it. <laughs> like, okay, but show show that here. Let me add this to the screen. What is this? Wait, really quickly. Shuvo is saying, isn't this specific to Muslims performing namaz in the middle of the street and blocking off traffic? Okay, but yeah. they're contending that they don't actually block traffic. So a lot of this, especially if you're not familiar with the area, it comes down to like, whose account do you want to believe? But one thing when I was learning about this, I wanted to see what this actually looked like. And so I just want to play like a minute of this. And before I play this clip, I know that anyone who is sympathizing with the Indian right wing will be triggered by the fact that I used the Quint as the source of this video. Okay. I know they're left leaning. Okay. But this is one of the few Indian news sources that actually provided good English subtitles for this. So guys, yeah, like the people who complain about this is the quint. This is actual footage from the ground. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where where this is being put. Uh, you know, which news outlet is publishing this? Like this happened. Like this, they didn't stage this. But yeah, go on. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna um, pause so we can read the subtitles in English. So it starts off with a guy saying, "The one who, the ones who want to offer namaz in open spaces." Just for wait, 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 wait. Pause, pause, pause. Namaz for people who don't know is like prayer in Islam. Yeah, okay. salah. Um, the ones who want to offer namaz in open spaces for Pakistan, they can go to Pakistan. It won't be allowed in India. Wow. So this wow. is shocking to me, and it will be repeatedly emphasized the extent to which they do not think that Muslims are Indian and belong in India. I want Americans, Americans who are watching who think that they own this whole idea of go back to your go back to where you came from idea. Like you don't own that. Like a lot of Americans, <laughs> like this is <laughs> this is getting this is giving me so much, uh, you know, right, far right, white supremacist, like nationalist vibes, right? In either Western European, North American countries. But this is like not like you don't own this. Like you can see, like this is this guy is basically just this Indian version of that. Go back to where you came from version of that. Yeah, go on. <laughs> We all saw what happened at Shaheen Baj. They resorted to theatrics by blocking roads. I'm not familiar with this event he's referring to. Sector 12 is just the beginning. So once again, I want to remind you, Sector 12 is, the, is referring to the specific site they're at during this little festival. But there are many sectors involved in this overall story. Sector 12 is just the beginning. The entire Gurugram, meaning the rest of the city, is left. So here you can see the little figure. It's a poop the... man. That's a poop oh, man. About... You know what? If this was a custom of Muslims, these far right Hindus would be jumping all over that. They would be like, look at this. Look at what they do. Look at their customs. But that's what they, yeah. Anyways, go on. Um. Uh, so they're saying like this is just the beginning we're going to go for the rest of the city after this and then they chant it it says protests against namaz meet prayer and guru grams open spaces get political backing as BJP's Kapil Mishra and Suraj Pal Amu participate in the um, festival, the puja. Those are the, the BJP members I was talking about previously who are, well, Mishra in particular is notorious for his anti-Muslim bigotry. At the Namaz site in Sector 12, Uh, the event organized by, and the English translation is the um, Joint Hindu uh, Struggle Committee. Yeah, the Joint Hindu Struggle Committee. The event organized by the Joint Hindu Struggle Committee was also attended by senior VHP members. VHP is um, a right-wing Hindu nationalist organization. 
this Wait, is the read same this comment. spot where Muslim Cody is saying, wow, that's the dung man. Weirdest religious flex to not want to be inclusive to other religion fanatics to get their <laughs> in their time with the dung man. <laughs> One thing that's so funny to me is uh, uh, every now and then on Twitter, you'll see Hindus and Muslims uh, fighting with each other over drinking cow piss versus drinking camel piss. <laughs> Yeah, this is basically this is the, the battle of the which piss is the holiest, right? Because yeah. you, you have in Islamic traditions, you have that camel piss is, but apparently has healing effects and can do wonders, and the Hindu tradition is like no, it's cow piss that does everything. And by the way, they both have like people who act like academic and try to go and prove that like I don't know either camel piss or cow piss cures like cancer or does this or doesn't you know. And we are not giving medical advice, YouTube. Oh, yeah, we're not giving this is like we don't believe in any of this. We're just telling you what other people will say. But it's so amazing that the two religions that hate each other the most, they both have their version of holy piss, like piss that has like uh, divine properties. But yeah, go on. Um, this is the last part I want to play. Um, because so and this is in English. This is the same spot where Muslims offer Jummah namaz every Friday at 1 p.m. The presence of these leaders, to a certain extent, was a legitimization of the protests that are going on in Gurgaon against namaz being performed in open spaces for the past several weeks. It was a show of strength by the right-wing groups that no amount of police action on any protesters is going to slow them down. So that's enough for right now. Um, Puya saying it's literal bullshit. Because <laughs> why do why do religious people make it so easy for us to make fun of the religion? Like, like other people, when they do commentary on politics or economic systems, they actually have to go do like research and like study like I don't know philosophical arguments behind this form of government or that form of government do some economic analysis on to say how much government involvement is good. When we want to criticize our, <laughs> the people that we're trying to highlight, we were like, these people, these people celebrate with, with, with dog shit, with cow shit, right? Like this is what they celebrate with, right? Like this is what, like, <laughs> what, it's so easy. Like we don't need to do that much research to be able to humiliate our opponents. But yeah, go on. Well, I mean, to me, the fact that the figure is like made with cow dung is like completely irrelevant to the story. Like I honestly don't care about. I know, that. I know, but it's actually, actually, let me steal, man. Let me steal, man. The cow dung um, celebration. Okay. See this? I'm being very charitable here. Okay. It actually, makes a lot of sense. Okay. We, with our modern sensibilities, don't understand how important cow dung is. Like, if you con consider um, the fact that this is actually a very valuable property, it is. You know, given how much you know, when it comes to fertilizing, that like this is the this is the commodity that you need to be able to get, um, you know, food out of the ground. Right. Like well, you can very... use it for fertilizing. You can use it to build houses. You can use it as yes. fuel. Yes, yes, exactly. Like growing in a like, imagine thousands of years of tradition of understanding that this is such a value, a valuable commodity, and literally makes f food grow much faster out of the ground, which you need to sustain yourself, right? So the fa like it, growing around, you know, knowing how precious of a fertilizer this is, and how much um, you would you would have a different relationship with it. You wouldn't see it as something disgusting that you need to be get rid of. It's something that actually you need more of. Um, so if you had grown in that environment or if you had a tradition, thousands of years of traditions, re recognizing this as a valuable commodity, you would look at it differently. Um, so that's why there's there, this is valued like this, yeah. But I wanna talk about the actual issue at hand. So yeah, go on, sorry. what do you think about the central issue which is um prayer in public like personally i don't like it especially if it is um blocking the street now there's contentions yeah. over if they were or were not actually blocking the street but like let's put that aside and just talk about like prayer in public in general like i i don't really i don't really like that 
oftentimes that's why i mean i would i don't like it either i would that's interpret why... it as a display of force personally yeah i don't it like a it group instead of just one person that's why i i i'm so it's so good that the solution that us atheists have is the same as what the religious people think the solution is so that that means we could get along right that means like we think like we don't want this in public it build build more mosques with your own money and they're like we want to they're not letting us so we are on the same side right they want more mosques we like we want them to be allowed to build their own mosque with their own money so given the sick given that the secular solution is something that the religious people would agree with i think this is such a no-brainer mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah I, don't, I think the yeah, public prayer should not be like if, um having prayers in public outside is not even is blocking you know streets and stuff even if it's for a short time but it's also uh, and imposing your religious ways on other people who might not be sharing your religion right so in public in public places somewhere that the tax is a common area where government funding has been used for everybody so for you to come and take this uh, and make it your own i think it's not good. I mean, I can I can sympathize with you because you don't have it. You haven't been given a space, so you're forced to be in public. But it will be something that I would be in favor of finding a remedy for. And the remedy for it is to make more mosques where you don't have to do this in public, where you're not taking space from other people to do your as to do your prayer. Yeah, I think the main maintaining the secularization of the public space is important but what part of what makes this contentious is the issue of this permit that was originally issued in 2018 um because the right-wing hindu side will say oh well this if this was only issued like in 2018 for one day for you were allowed to do it and then you just kept doing it other people even say that it was faked or that it's been manipulated um so the resolving of this public ordinance is um is a complicated matter of this issue. I think this is going to continue to be an issue in this area. It doesn't seem like it's been completely resolved yet. Um, because even if I, I read that um, some Muslim groups did make concessions on these public areas, um, but I don't think that um, it's going to stop. I think that there is going to be a continued effort to continue to push for no prayer in public. And one one thing that makes it um, conflicting for me is, like I said, I, I do support the maintenance of the secularization of public space. Um, but if city governments have previously uh, permitted and allowed this to happen, then um, having them be openly pressured to remove that, um, I don't think is okay. And meanwhile, other groups are also being allowed and permitted to do their religious things in public. That's, um, you know, I, I, I feel complicated ways about it, but that's kind of how it sorts out for me. So somebody in the left is saying, if they want to pray, they should buy land and build their own mosque. Yeah, that's what we're saying. They should build, they should buy land and build their own mosque. Like, but there is a lot of pressure on them. Like there's a lot of legal, you know, like, it's not that easy for them to do so like um, the the legal loopholes that they have to jump through and there's a lot of intimidation and you know right like that's what we've heard before right um what is uh what is so what do we say like why don't you just build more mosque muslims and pray in there what would you say to that i mean like the zoning like why I that think, isn't happening yeah yeah my okay so the muslim side would say that they're not allowed to do that right now they're right. they're not being That's allowed what... the permitting I, so again it kind, it kind of comes down to especially if you don't know for yourself intimately what these areas are like which side are you inclined to believe whose narrative yeah. do you want to go with um make it easier for them to do say. so i'm in terms of the accusation that they're not even being allowed to go construct their own private spaces to um, do their prayers, I don't know what the right-wing Hindu response to that would be in terms of what they yeah. say is going on in the city and why that can't, yeah. Yeah, so just make the permitting, the zoning or whatever, just make them not, like, make it easier for them to be able to build. I just have, 
I might be wrong about this, but I'm just assuming that being in such a um, living in such an environment where people are so um, sensitive about Muslims getting more spaces, it's not easy for you to be able to get the permit to build a mosque. But if you want them not to pray in the streets, then make that easier for them. That's what I think. Well, yeah, Anyways. they were just saying, like, just go pray at home. Don't do it in public. Just go pray at home. Okay, then let's shut down the temples as well. Okay? If you want them to go pray at home, let's just shut down the Hindu temples and you go just do your old Hindu festival. Just do your Hindu things at home. And you don't get to How construct your big tents in the street. Yeah, just shut Fair down all the Hindu temples. Like, that. make it equal then. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, by the way, I don't think, I, I, I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying that the people who are, uh, suggest that they're only looking at it only, they want to only, sh um, get the Muslims only to do it privately at home, but not themselves. So they're being hypocrites. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.